Okay, so now we're going to think about transformers. Um, so for your exam, you need to understand the mathematics and design of these transformers. So, basic way a transformer works. Hopefully you're going to remember this from my GCSE. Um, we have on there a primary side and a secondary side, or sometimes we call them windings because they're made of coils of wire wrapped around a transformer core. Now, the transformer core must be made of iron um, because iron is magnetic, so it will allow a magnetic field to go through it. So the basic principle of a transformer is we put in a AC current into the primary side. That AC current is going to act like an electromagnet and create a magnetic field. That magnetic field will flow through the iron core and now I've got a changing field on my secondary coil and that will induce a current, sorry, induce a voltage there. So if I was to write that now into the more A-level method, uh, the first thing I'm going to say is that the voltage on the primary will be the number of coils on the primary times the magnetic flux uh, divided by time taken. Why is that? Well, because I already know that an induced EMF is equal to minus uh, magnetic flux linkage over time. Now, physics tends to be pretty symmetrical, so if I can say this is an induced EMF is from a changing magnetic field, um, I can also magnetic flux, or in this case magnetic flux linkage. I can actually say um, that because of the kind of the general symmetry of physics, having a changing uh, voltage will also create a changing magnetic flux linkage. Um, on the secondary, it's, a, it's even simpler. I can say, well, assuming that this magnetic flux is all changing through this coil, I already know that EMF induced is equal to rate of change of flux linkage. So I can get to this equation. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. If I just divide one by the other, um, so I know that, so I'm asking for Vs over Vp. Um, so Vs is number of coils on the secondary times magnetic flux over T. And that is equal to magnetic flux linkage through the primary. Now, in the, because of this core between them, the magnetic flux is always the same. Um, if it's whatever it is in, in one side of the core, it will be the same on the other side of the core. So I can say that uh, both for top and bottom, uh, rate of change of flux linkage is identical, so those just cancel and lead me back to this equation. And that's how you prove it. Obviously this equation only works if I can say that these two uh, flux linkages, flux magnetic fluxes, are the same. So how do I make the two fluxes the same? A couple of little things that you need to do. Um, to make transforms efficient, they need to have low resistance in each winding. Otherwise, obviously, you're going to use up voltage uh, just pushing your current around the winding. Uh, they also need to have a laminated core. So that's an interesting idea. Um, if you remember what we said um, right at the start when you're thinking about Lenz's law, what can happen is if you've got a changing magnetic field uh, through your, your, your transformer, then you can start to set up currents inside there. And these are the eddy currents. So what we do in a real transformer is we make it laminated. And the reason we make it laminated is it prevents magnetic, uh, sorry, it prevents currents from flowing in the way that I've just drawn them. I'll try you doing it in green, so it's a bit easier to see. Um, it will prevent currents kind of looping around and creating eddy currents that way. So what they work, the way that they work, is that you have lots of thin slices of steel, um, and then you put a very thin insulating layer between them. So because they're insulated, now we'll find that we can't create those eddy currents swirling round because they're insulated from one another. Um, so if you don't have eddy currents, then you don't waste energy um, against uh, sort of resistive heating and stuff like that inside there. Um, and the last one is the core needs to be made of soft iron. So these individual laminations, the iron that you use, has to be soft iron. Soft iron means iron that can be easily magnetized and demagnetized. If you have to put in energy forcing it to become a magnet and forcing it to stop being a magnet, um, again, efficiency just means that it won't, um, you, won't put, you won't get all the energy in out again. 
to the softer iron you have, the more easily it creates, sets up and loses its magnetic fields, uh, the stronger your, so the, the more efficient this is going to be. For CIE, most of the time they're going to assume that your uh, transformers are 100% efficient. So you don't need to worry too much about this, but it is worth being aware that obviously, like anything, um, we can use the efficiency calculation right the way that you've been using from IGCSE. Now, why do we bother using transformers? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, if you remember from electricity, we know that the power in something is uh, IV, and you can then uh, show how that becomes I squared times R. So if we think about moving electricity around a country, well, these wires, these, let's use a different color so you can see it, um, the wires that are carrying it, they will have a fixed resistance. So, because the resistance is fixed, what we can say is we want to have as low a current flowing through them as possible, because as this R isn't changing, the only way that we can reduce the power in the wires is by reducing current. Just a little side note there. Some people, sometimes people get confused by this because they think, well, how then will I transfer power? So it's important to remember that what this equation is saying uh, P is IV, this is the power lost to a component. So in other words, if I have a resistor like this, um, I'm saying that the power um, out from this resistor is IV. I might have um, a lot of uh, power then being lost elsewhere in the circuit. So when I'm saying P is IV, this is the power lost in those individual wires. Um, so obviously the, I want as low a current as possible, um, or if I rewrote this equation I could also say power is V squared over R. Um, but that's not terribly helpful, so I might actually take that out. Um, let's just think about it in terms of I squared R. Um, what we know is that if uh, the power in to a transformer is equal to the power out. So I also know that voltage on the primary times current in the, in the primary is equal to voltage in the secondary times uh, current in the secondary. So I can rearrange that and I get VP over VS is equal to IS over IP. So in other words, I can say if voltage uh, goes up, current goes down. So that tells me that the higher my voltage in my transmission lines, the lower my current and the less energy I'm going to waste. Obviously having really, really high voltages is quite dangerous though. You can get an electric shock quite easily from them. So that's why we use transformers. We generate electricity at a relatively high voltage, a couple of thousand volts normally. Then we transfer it around the country at scarily high voltage so that we have really good efficiency. Then when we get into homes, we need to reduce that voltage for safety uh, so it can be used um, without having big sparks jumping at you out of your, your power supplies. Um, but by having that combination, that's how we're able to get really, really high efficient energy transfers.